Our next speaker is coming from an exotic land of Korea, and uh, he's going to talk about input methods in plasma, obviously Korean input methods, and some surprises, I guess. Maybe. So, uh, thank you so much for coming. This is something, it's a topic that's very dear to me, and my ambition is that by the end, that may also be the case for you. We'll see. So, I did write for 45 minutes, and I have about 30, so I need to move at a bit of a fast clip, which means we'll skip over this part and get right to the meat of it. So what are input methods? And I'm going to sort of front load you with some terminology. It's going to be a little bit abstract, and there will be demos later on that will make this sort of concrete and visible, so don't worry about getting lost. So input methods are ultimately about a conversion of input events into some sort of output text. And the most common input event is a key press, but it can also be a tap on screen, or it can be a more complex gesture, like a swipe gesture. There could even be handwriting, drawing something, or even voice input. And it's ultimately about divorcing output from input, like what you get out doesn't have to be directly mapped to what you put in. And that's usually stateful, that is, at some point you start inputting and you do things and then you get done. And this middle part is done by software, that's where the magic happens, and it can do that in a very rich and interactive way using various sorts of UI. And now it's about why would you even want that, who needs that, and what for. So there are two broad categories of use cases for input methods. There are use cases where an input method is essential to communication. That is about currently 20% of the world population natively speak a language that requires an input method to be written into a computer. And while it's 20% of the world population, it's currently not yet 20% of computer users because they don't all have a computer yet, but we expect or hope that to change. So the number of computer users who require an input method to write their native language is going to rise over time. And furthermore, those users are currently underrepresented among users of open systems. That is, if you are someone who needs an input method to write your language, you will be more likely to use a proprietary system than an open system. And there are reasons for that, and, and we will get into those at length later. The other broad type of input method use is assistive. That is, you don't necessarily need it to type, but you want it to be faster or to type something that you rarely type. And we have demos of both of those. So examples of the latter would be word completions, word suggestions, even spell checking can fit into that scope. And that stuff is very common on mobile, but people don't use it enough on the desktop. And now it's a chicken and egg thing, sort of on both accounts. That is why people who need an input method are underrepresented among open source users is because our support for it is not good enough yet. And the reason why you don't use it on the desktop is also because our support is bad for it, because you don't know it exists, you don't know how to set it up. And that's also stuff we will touch on later. And now let's look at some demos so you actually know very concretely what this is about. And a good example to sort of ease you into this is writing Korean. Korean is written using an alphabet. It's actually very similar to the Latin alphabet. It has about the same number of letters. It has consonants. It has vowels. It has a very simple keyboard layout. Every letter is mapped to a key. You press it, you get a letter. But there's one twist to it. As letters form a syllable, they get grouped into a one character wide block. That is, if I press this letter, I, if I press this key, I get one letter. That's the consonant that probably matches H in English. Now, if I type another letter, oh, first off, you can see 
This is one character. If I use the arrow keys, it will skip over this. Now if I do this again, but I press an additional key, now I have two letters in one character wide block. You can see this when I use the arrow keys, the cursor will skip over this entire thing. Now, there's something really complicated going on here, which is there's already text in this text field, and as I press the second and third keys, that text gets yanked out and replaced with something else. And that happens by way of communication between the input method and the application. There's a very rich protocol going on there to allow that to happen. And in fact, you can see it's stateful because while I'm composing this block, the colors are inverted. And that's in fact also the input method telling the application to invert the colors because this protocol has providing formatting hints within its scope. So another good example is writing Chinese. Many of you will be sort of aware that, oops, <laughs> hang on, now I made a mistake and pressed one letter too much. Uh, one click too much, actually. I will have to restart, sorry about that. See, I wrote this in Qt Quick so I could save awkward fumbling by switching to other applications to demo things. And now I'm awkwardly fumbling, so that worked out great. Now, many of you will be sort of dimly aware that Chinese is written using thousands of characters. And doing that on a computer is a problem that really only becomes tractable by using an input method because you need to somehow select among those characters. And that's, it's essentially a search operation. You input some sort of search query and the input method will provide you with characters to choose from. So I typed one key and it offers up a number of candidates of letters. And I can just accept the first one by pressing space and type another one. And that's, that's hello in Chinese. And that only took two key presses even though there's thousands of characters. And what I did was type the first letter of the sound value of those characters in Latin. So I wrote romanization and it provided me with matching characters and it was very smart about suggesting common ones and that way I could type this very quickly. There are other ways of writing Chinese. You can, instead of using Latin, use a different writing system to write your search query. You might select among characters by their graphical features. You might draw one. So it's about, the, the point of this is that there's a pattern of providing a search term and being presented with candidates to choose from and picking one. And that UI, that pop-up that appeared on screen that you selected the characters on is provided by the system to the application. It's not part of the application, it's a system service. Now, very similar to writing Chinese is typing emoji, except it's language agnostic because we all know that cat pictures are universal. Yeah, I think that was a joke. <laughs> so if I type cat now, I will get numerous candidates and as you see this pop up beautifully slides of screen. And there uh, we have a cat. So that's nice. That's cute. And now we have another bug. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right, another restart of this. I'm really sorry. Anyways, the next demo is about uh, word completion and spell checking, which you can also do within the scope of input methods. There's a cat to make us feel happier again. Okay. All right, so let's go right ahead. We can type something. 
really complicated, that's long, and that we don't want to type in full. And again, we get presented with a list of candidates, and we can press a number and complete something. And that's a really good example of something that's assistive. And in the case, for example, of mobile, word completions are about overcoming a handicap. The handicap being that typing on a touch screen is really slow, and we want to be faster, so we tap word completions on the bar there to be faster and have a convenient typing experience. We can do that on a desktop, but we usually don't. And let's get into that. Actually, first off, let's talk about input method technology. And I will sort of have to skip over some of this for time. So the way it usually works on the desktop is that we have a central daemon running, which hosts input method plugins. And there's usually one active. And you saw me switch between input methods that was telling the daemon which plugin to load. And there's a lot of IPC going on. As your application gets a keyboard event, it will then forward it to the input method daemon, and the input method plugin will do its magic and send the result back. And the UI that gets invoked as part of that and that the user interacts with is another process, which also talks via IPC to the input method daemon. And what you get out of the central demo is that the input method plugins don't have to repeat all sorts of boilerplate to manage their configuration and stuff like that. And the UI in this case was provided by Plasma, and we'll get into that later. So on the desktop, there's a bunch of players. Um, first of all, Skim is sort of, it has fallen out of fashion, so we can ignore it for the rest of this talk. The two big ones are IBAS and FCITX. IBAS is the default on many distributions. FCITX is the default on, of some of them. In some distributions, you will get one of those depending on which locale you install with, because the respective user bases prefer one or the other based on their performance and features. Plasma being Plasma and KDE being KDE, we support all of them. And the way the application talks to the input methods to the input method daemon is usually done via the toolkit. In Qt, it's done, again, via plugins. <coughs> Qt has a framework of input context plugins, which interface with the input method daemon. Uh, some of them do. Others implement an input method right in process in Qt. So sometimes a Qt application will send an input event that it received on to an input method daemon. Sometimes the magic happens directly in the Qt process because the plugin, Qt plugin itself is an input method. Now, some of those plugins are in the Qt source tree, some are out of tree. Qt 5 bundles the IBUS plugin. Um, FCITX is out of tree. IBUS used to be out of tree, but is now in tree. And what in the end gets delivered to your Q widget or to your Q quick item is a Q input method event, and that essentially tries to wrap around all the things that the input method protocols can do. It will tell you the current state. It will tell you what text to replace, what text to insert. It will tell you the formatting hints. And that gets interpreted. And the text control will then manipulate the document and swap text out and reformat it, depending on the events it gets. So those slides have desktop in parentheses. And there's a reason for that, because mobile is unfortunately not using any of the above, and that's a problem in and of itself. And that becomes apparent when we look at the input method community, because input methods is one of those things where you can't divorce the technology from the social dimension, because it's a, it's a really wide problem domain. There are many writing systems to cover. Not all of them are currently supported or supported well on open systems nor are the existing met input methods by any means done. There's a lot of work to do to make them faster and better and smarter. And there's very few people working on solving those problems. And there are writing systems where we rely on a single expert to provide support for a writing system to open systems. And yet, despite that, we ask them 
often to do work redundantly because we have the fragmentation I talked about. We have multiple players on the desktop and we have mobile, which in turn has multiple players, which I will talk about later. So if you're looking to bring support for your native writing system to open systems by way of an input method, you probably will have to do much of that work multiple times to integrate in all of those systems. And that's really a waste of their time, and it means we're not exploiting that manpower efficiently. And another problem there is that by the very nature of the problem domain, we are dealing with language barrier and existing, because input method users are underrepresented among users and makers of open systems, people who make input methods often don't have the primary language of an open source community as their native language. So you get language barrier effects and communities don't care enough about this topic yet to try to, to cater to that and, and make the first step and, and embrace those people. So that's another impediment to solving all the problems that we will talk about. Um, KDE is part of the input method community. There is overlap between Plasma developers and FCITX developers, and we've also worked on the IBUS support in Qt. We go in there and fix bugs. Now, specifically in Plasma Desktop, the thing that you saw me use down here in the panel is called the input method panel widget. And that's a front end to all those different demons that I talked about, uh, IBUS, FCITX, SKIM. And <clears throat> through that um, widget, you can access the configuration of the active input method or the daemon itself. It will display toggles that the active input method has and, and options. For example, the uh, word completion one that I just demoed at the end um, has a privacy toggle because it can learn with use. If you type words very often, complete them very often, it will offer them earlier and stuff like that. And you might not want it to remember sensitive stuff, so you can toggle privacy mode on and it will stop tracking what you do. And the way to do that is via the panel widget. And this technology also provides the pop-ups that you saw me interact with. And very briefly recapping our recent work in this area, we finally moved the input method widget from the Plasma add-ons package to the core, which was really the first step towards taking this stuff a little more seriously because now we can auto add it to the panel when you first log onto Plasma in the Korean locale, for example. And we improved IBUS support. That's a little bit technical. We can skip over that right now. But very interesting is um, the Plasma team worked with the Neon team to sort of create a really intense integration test, which is the KDE Neon Korean Developer Edition, which is basically a, a customized variant of Neon that as it boot up, boots up into live CD mode or as you install it on a hard drive, it will install in Korean and it will set up all of this stuff. So there's something we can test to make sure it works and stays working. And we made this originally for KDE's 20th birthday party in Seoul and we handed it out there for free to a lot of interest. And we've gotten a fair bunch of patches out of that, by the way. This is the KD Neon Korean edition. And it's a little bit fuzzy, but you can see some Korean writing down there and in the menu. And that's that birthday party, which was really fun. Now, now it gets interesting. So what are the pain points that I sort of keep alluding to? So first off, Setting this stuff up is difficult. It requires expert knowledge. If you are dealing with an English system and you want to teach it to be able to type Korean, then you need to know what IBUS is. You need to tell your package manager to install it. You need to know about the plugin. You need to all manually add the panel widget. You need to configure it. And configuring it is really hard because 
the configuration is not where you expect it to be. It's not in system settings. You have to go via the panel widget. And in fact, the moment that you start using an input method system, a lot of the system settings become re first of redundant, but they also actually stop working. Because if you use IBAS, in many cases, it will take over keyboard layout management. So changing the keyboard layout and system settings will actually no longer work, which is it's just a really big mess. And the problem there is that system settings only deals in keyboard layouts currently. Now, the input method panel itself sort of competes with the system tray. First of all, here's the current settings we have in system settings, which are solely dedicated to keyboard layouts. Now, the input method panel widget sort of competes with the system tray. It has its own mechanism for hiding items there. You know, it's its icons on the panel, just like what the system tray does, but it redundantly has its own system for showing and hiding items in there, and that's a bit jarring and not necessary, and is another problem we need to solve. Now, there are solutions, and the most important of them is to make input methods always on rather than treat it as an optional thing. And it doesn't matter much actually whether that's a build time dependency or a runtime dependency. What matters is that we force distributions to package it and install it along with Plasma. Because if we don't do that, we cannot, we cannot, users cannot rely on it being there, but also we cannot write any UI, settings UI that depends on it being there. And we really need that because we need to revamp the config UI. We need to get away from managing keyboard languages, uh, keyboard layouts, and go towards managing input languages, which, by the way, is exactly how it works on every competing system, both open and proprietary. The idea is if you want to type Korean, you go to system settings and you add Korean and it will figure out the rest. And Plasma is very far away from that currently and it needs to catch up. We have a keyboard layout indicator currently that's really smart. When you configure more than one keyboard layout, something will automatically appear in your tray and you can switch between keyboard lay uh, layouts there and you can see that obviously is redundant with switching between input methods. That needs to be unified. And then you also no longer need to manually add the panel widget. It should automatically appear. And we need to integrate the input method panel with the system tray. The input method panel should just register tray icons and the tray should sort them together. Then you can do show and hide via the uh, tray settings. Now, I kept mobile apart until now because it really is apart and that's a really big problem. So very briefly, um, the main difference is of course, instead of a physical keyboard, you have a screen. Those are not mutually exclusive, and that's part of the problem. Um, with a mobile device, you may actually have more than one input device. If you have like an old slidey smartphone, you have a screen and physical buttons, but also we want to get to a place where you can connect the physical keyboard to a mobile device. And we are in that place already in many cases. And the very early screen keyboards we used to have were just key event generators. You click the button and it would generate a key event and send it through the sort of conventional means of dealing with those, which was clumsy, but actually a little bit better than what we do now. So currently Plasma Mobile uses um, a keyboard, virtual keyboard framework called Mallet. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly but it was um, conceived by Nokia together with Intel. They did it for the Memo, Amigo stuff back in the day. And basically the reason we use it is because it's there. And it's not very good and it's mostly unmaintained and it's horribly over-designed. And that's what it looks like. It's not very pretty either. And we want to get away from that. We want to switch to cute virtual keyboard which used to be a proprietary add-on to Qt, which is now, has recently become a proper open source Qt module. And it's implemented as an um, input context plugin in Qt. Now that might make you think it means it won't work in anything but Qt apps, but where we want to use it 
is on the phone and the phone is valent, which means we actually have a Qt app handling input events, which is Quinn valent. And so the virtual keyboard runs in process in the compositor and can then accept input from the virtual keyboard and forward it to the currently active application using the Wayland protocols. And we do use it on the desktop as well. We have, it, for example, in the lock screen, if you detach your keyboard from your desktop and you need to log in, you can open the virtual keyboard from there. <coughs> so the reason why in mobile we have Mallet and we have Qt virtual keyboard is, well, first of all, we do need the UI parts, but the way they are implemented are for reasons that we as makers of open systems don't actually share, which is mostly licensing. Um, a lot of the input method stuff is GPL. Uh, device makers tend to be a bit scared of the GPL. They don't want to have GPL stuff on there, so they decided instead of reusing code, we would create our own. That is, Mallet and Qt Virtual Keyboard duplicate everything that IBAS and FCITX do. If you want Korean, it's implemented there redundantly. So what I talked about earlier, that we are spreading the community that works on input method stuff thin, we are spreading it even thinner by the way we do things on mobile right now for dumb reasons. And that means we are not achieving feature parity both ways. Um, Qt Virtual Keyboard and Marlet lack stuff that IBAS and the desktop things do and vice versa. And also not just feature but also behavior parity. That is if you type things, for example, think of the Chinese demo. You might come to expect a certain sorting um, of the characters that are offered to you. For example, because it learns with use. If you s select a character very often, you want that to be offered uh, very high in the list of choices. But if you have a different stack on f running the physical keyboard and a different stack running the virtual keyboard, and they independently learn from each other, you might actually get different suggestions which is bad, it's a challenge to convergence, where the idea is that you can take your Plasma mobile device and dock it to a screen and a keyboard, and it should f offer the same features and behave the same way. And in fact, it should even synchronize state. If you think back to the Korean demo, um, I typed three letters to form one block. Now imagine you do the first two key presses on your screen, and then you want to do the last one on a physical keyboard. It should work, it doesn't. Right now, because the code running behind the scenes is complete, completely separate from each other, you actually need to delete your text and start over. You, it doesn't work and that sucks. And there's very poor UI integration and no consistency. If you use input method panel widget to select your input method that has no effect on the virtual keyboard and, and vice versa. So currently the best idea we have to solve that is that Qt Virtual Keyboard itself is extensible. You can teach Qt Virtual Keyboard a new writing system. And what we would like to do is instead to teach it to outsource that job to something like FCITX. FCITX can be used as a library. So instead of talking to it via IPC, you can also load it as a library and make calls into that. So we want to extend Qt Virtual Keyboard with a plugin that calls into FCITX and then possibly use FCITX both for the physical keyboard and the virtual keyboard to solve those integration problems. And we should reuse the UI we have for the input method panel widget in the keyboard tray. So there's the same UI for switching between input languages. And <clears throat> and finally, I want to talk about why we should care about this. And one reason is written down in our manifesto on manifesto.kd.org. It says that we care about inclusivity and we have an end user focus. And inclusivity obviously means that people should be able to write their native language on our systems. 
if we want to be inclusive, we need to cover all of those ways of writing. And it should be efficient and it should be easy to set up. That's the end user focus part. And doing that will create sort of a feedback loop because as we enable our systems to be used by these kinds of people, some of them will become our future developers. They will help make us that better and they will help us make many other things better. Right now, somebody who would be a great KD developer might install our system and abandon it very quickly because they can't figure out how to message their mom. And that sucks. So getting those people, allowing those people to use our systems will allow them to help us. But there's also something more fundamental and that's why we actually do what we do and why we are here. And I think it's because as software designers and as artists and translators and as programmers, we get to sort of operate in a very exciting support role. We get to help enable culture and, and build civilization because there's, there's nothing more satisfying than writing software that allows someone to express themselves and to connect with others because that's when all that cool stuff happens. And input methods are very directly about that because communication is essential to culture and language is essential to communication. Yeah, that's it. How are we doing on time? Uh, we have a time for a really short few questions. All right. Jonathan. It's essentially cutting into your break. Oh. You said that we need to be forced, us distributions need mm -hmm. to be forced. Uh, is there a release? Because Plasma is packaged. Who would not package part well, of Plasma? No, you need to be forced in the sense that we have the input method panel widget in Plasma Desktop, but it's not a hard build dependency. Like the stuff that input method panel needs, like for example IBUS or FCITX, is not a hard build time or runtime dependency, which means it allowed you guys the luxury of ignoring that problem. And so what we need to do is say, you know you can't package Plasma without making sure that the foundational means are there. And that sounds really scary, but the thing is it's actually not that scary because you already have a package for IBUS. You just don't have it in the dependency list for Plasma. So if we say we need this, you add one line and this, the entire situation changes. Have you discussed this with KD packagers? Have KD packagers list? Have you discussed this with KD packagers on the list? Uh, not on the list. I have discussed it with individual packages. And for example, um, obviously Neon helped by doing the, the Neon Korean Developer Edition. But also we worked with the Fedora community to um, try out what I talked about, that we now ought to add the panel widget if you install in a locale that is known to require an input method, like Korean or Chinese. And we sort of improved our first logon script and the Fedora people worked with us to test that. So you are right, I should go to the list and spread that further, but we've been talking to a number of different distros. Also OpenSUSE, um, they work on FCITX and they are pretty well on top of this. So it's not hopeless, we just need to do it. So. Uh, here, here, here. Uh, as an application developer, I don't really need to care much. You only need to care if you implement your own custom text widget that needs to handle Q input events, uh, input method events. And Kate is an example of that. I've fixed bugs in Kate that like, for example, um, it, the input method can provide formatting hints, right? When I was typing Korean, the colors were inverted. Some other input methods use color annotations and stuff like that. And um, that was broken in Kate. That was a bug where text turned invisible because foreground and background color became the same. I fixed that. So we have some cases in Kate 
where we needed to implement the handling for those input method events. But typically, if you use toolkit provided standard text widgets, no, you don't need to care. With my packager hat on, um, can you teach me enough Korean or Chinese that I can at least test this? Sure, find me, I will. Excellent. <laughs> yes. As I have done with many other people. <laughs> More questions? Jonathan, you had one? Uh, why is it so hard to set up from the from the KD Neon Korean edition? That needed a whole separate edition where it pre-installed some stuff and then and then you have to set some sim links and some settings and then reboot and I know well, from So um, there's a number of reasons of that. First of you needed a couple of pieces, right? You need the in for example for Korean you need the iBus daemon, so that's one package. But then you need iBus dash hangul, which is the Korean input method. So now, you, from a distribution perspective, you get the problem of at what time should I actually pull in that iBus hangul package? Like, how do I know it's a it's a it's a Korean system? So effectively, what we will need to do is something a little bit like language pack install or codec install, where if you go into system settings and you add Korean as an input language, system settings actually needs to tell your system package manager that you want to install uh, I was Hangul. So what distributions need to do is to provide an easy interface for us to say we want Korean support and you install everything that that means. So you need to have sort of a bundle. And some distributions already have that as dependencies of their language packs and so on. So like a lot of the infrastructure is already there, just there's integration seams. And the other stuff that's difficult is mostly on the Plasma side. Like even if you have all the packages installed, you still need to do the manual step, if you start with an English system, of adding the panel widget. And then you need to go through the panel widget to add the, I, uh, the Korean input method to your list of active input methods in iBus. So there's, from the user perspective, there's install packages, add panel widget, configure input method daemon, uh, start using. And you need expert knowledge to do each of those steps. And so on the Plasma side, we need to fix system settings. So you only need to do one thing. And system settings needs to interface with the distribution part to get the stuff installed. But actually, and like, why are you saying, here, I'm here. Why are you saying that it's actually the distro's problem, right? Like, if Plasma knows that it's in, in Korean, Plasma should install whatever it takes and make sure that it shows in Korean. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if when you install the distro, you select Korean, Plasma right. should be installing whatever the right, right. are done. So, so it's, it's your job, not other people's. You're right. Um, so that's, it's interesting, that's a reflection of what the landscape currently is. So we have fragmentation, right? We have IBAS and FCITX. Now on OpenSUSE, depending on which locale you install, you will actually get one or the other. Because what the users of OpenSUSE said to OpenSUSE is, we are Chinese, we prefer FCITX because it works better. And some other language users told OpenSUSE, we prefer IBAS because it works better for our language. So OpenSUSE currently has the intelligence of installing the right stuff. And I agree that we need to uplift this into Plasma and it needs to be Plasma calling the shots. And we, need, we may have to make a hard decision of which input method daemon we want to support, which is a really political thing. And KDE likes to be conflict averse, and so we just support everything. And then you get a multiple, multiplying of, of integration seams. So we need to realize that it's our responsibility and that we may need to ruffle some feathers and, and just to, to point out GNOME, uh, GNOME has the setting stuff pretty well done. And one of the reasons is that they decided to only support IBUS. But if we decide to only support IBUS, we already piss off several Plasma developers who also hack on FCITX. It's a hard situation. Okay, this is all the time that we have. So let's thank Heike.